YouTube, what is good? So today we are talking about how to grow your photography business to the point where it's making six figures a year. I think this is a realistic goal for most creatives out there, most people trying to get into photography, especially with all the opportunities that are present out there these days. Now, I do not like my personal financial information being out on the internet. That's why I'm framing this video this way. Uh, making six figures a year, we're just talking the business itself. So it brings in $100,000, then you pay your taxes, you pay any money that you got to pay for expenses and then you pay yourself so realistically I think for most people you'd probably make around 60k actually profit maybe like 55 or something like that which is still very good money we're not gonna get into like actually making and bringing home six figures that's a completely different discussion and something that I don't feel like talking about today so you're gonna have to trust me and take my word for this that my photography business this thing that I built over the last couple years really eight years eight years was the first time uh, or eight years ago was the first time I had my first paid photography job. You just gotta take my word for it. I'm not selling you a course or anything, but my business has brought in over six figures the last couple of years, and it's continued to grow year by year. So today we're gonna break down the exact step-by-step -step process of how I did that going back eight years ago to the point a couple years ago when I saw that you know six-figure number on my taxes for the first time. So let's get into it. If you enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up button for me. This is gonna be one of the more podcast style videos on the channel so if you got to go on a run clean your house clean your car do whatever sit back just listen and take in this information because it is everything I've learned doing this thing the starting point for every photographer and the starting point I recommend to everyone when it comes to getting your first client is actually the opposite of what a lot of people think especially in today's social media heavy world a lot of people think that you need to start building a social media base from the jump and I do agree agree with that, but your first priority when it comes to making money should be person-to-person -person interactions. People is what is going to get you paid. That goes all the way through your career. The connections you make in person are gonna be the most valuable. So when I was first starting out, my first photo shoots were all these basic freelance jobs. And these freelance jobs carry on and grow through your career. I did one literally like two weeks ago. But what is a freelance job? A freelance job is anything that you can do with your camera to make some money. You're family friend has a new kid and you're going to do like family portraits or something in your backyard. You know people graduating high school are going to do senior portraits. You know people who want you to photograph their birthday party. Whatever it is, those jobs to start out that make you that couple hundred dollars. That is where I started. My first photography paid gig was me doing um, press deck photos for hip hop groups here in Atlanta. I would walk around the city with them, make a bunch of photos, give them the photos. They would use them in press decks and media kits and things like that. And they would pay me I think like 250 bucks for two hours plus the edits. Starting your career and starting your money-making journey of your business with these basic photo shoots is definitely what I recommend. We want to get that first client under your belt because everything is a snowball effect in business. Once you get the first client, word of mouth is going to travel. One That person is going to tell somebody else, hey, they did a really good job and so on and so forth to the point where you're starting to make a little bit of extra money that way. And as your experience grows, you'll be able to charge more for these shoots and get to the point where your day rate, you know, is something like $1,500 a day. Freelance gigs is number one. That is the first way to start making money with photography today. It's what I recommend to everyone because it's something that goes through your entire career. Now, the second phase of all this, building up the art piece of your photography. So we just talked about kind of the businessy freelance side of photography, which is one thing you want to build up. But simultaneously, it's beneficial to build up the art side. And what this does for you also is it prevents creative burnout. You're not going to get so tired of constantly doing portraits and jobs that you're not super enthused about all the time. You're going to be able to do those half the time and be able to do art and creative stuff the other half of the time. So what is art photography? Art photography is whatever you're interested in. This can be street photography, cityscape photography, landscape photography. It can be mountain biking, action sports. It literally doesn't matter. Anything that you find interesting can be your art creative outlet. Now, what I do recommend to people is, like I talked about in the last vlog on this channel, is finding something that people are interested in. I mean, 
art is great, but when it comes to creating art to sell and make money with, you want to do something that people care about. You know, it's going to be harder to make money with a smaller niche. Obviously, the bigger, the broader the topic, the more potential customers there are. So with me early on, one thing that I did was a lot of Atlanta-based photography. So everything I did on my Instagram, everything I did selling prints, everything I did with galleries was all based on, you know, Atlanta. And that's where I built a following on social media. And that is where social media comes into play with the art side of things. Five years ago, you could just simply post photos on Instagram. Actually, we'll say like seven years ago. You could just post photos on Instagram and, you know, had the potential of growing and getting a big audience. Now, it's a little bit more tricky. You want to show more of the behind the scenes, more of the brand behind the art that you're creating, this is going to create basically a connection between your audience and you. And I recognized this years ago, and that's why I started YouTube. If you go back and watch all the early videos on this channel, everything is centered around the experience of me going out and creating art. So Essentially, I would go out and I would create art. I would create my Atlanta photography. People could watch the video, get a behind the scenes, get more of a connection to it. So when a project like a photo book or a print came out, that was the audience. They were more likely to buy that particular thing. That is how I grew that side of the business. Now, what's interesting is as you grow this art and creative side of your business and you start focusing on social media, telling the story of the things you're creating, you know, also just quick bounce back. In today's social media world, I think TikTok is one of the most valuable things you can do to really build this brand around the things that you're making. You know, everybody loves behind the scenes videos for creativity and TikTok makes it so simple. And I think there's a lot of room for photographers to really take advantage of TikTok today. And you can still take advantage of Instagram as well. But I think reels and stories and the things that are happening on Instagram are way more important than just posting art photos necessarily right now. And you can also do YouTube. So you see what we're doing here. We're growing two sides of our business simultaneously at once. As you meet more people in person, as you get more of these freelance jobs, even if they're one-off random things like family portraits, you are going to create that snowball effect on that side of your business, and those people are more likely to potentially follow your art, and vice versa. The people who find your art and your creative stuff on social media are more likely to book you for these one-off jobs. So everything bounces back and forth. It's kind of funny. The first gallery I had of Atlanta photos was actually through someone I met doing freelance work for them. So you never really know where opportunities are going to come from. It's just really good to continue to increase your network as much as possible. I talked about this in the last vlog, which I'll link down below in the description. As your network grows via social media and in person, your net worth can continue to grow and your business can grow. So working on both of those things simultaneously can take a lot of time. This is not an overnight thing. You're not going to just grow this business in one day. But if you're consistent for you know three, four years of really dedicating yourself to trying to build a name for yourself as a photographer and working in a niche that you think is going to be lucrative, I guarantee you can find yourself an audience if you're doing both of these things at the same time. Now, real quick, before we continue on with this video today, I briefly want to thank the sponsor, Cuts. If you go to the link in the description down below, you can get 15% off your first order from Cuts. Cuts is a brand that you see me wear in essentially every single video. I have a bunch of their sweaters. I have a bunch of their hoodies. They actually have started introducing new products like outerwear. They've got this fire vest. They got a bomber jacket that I haven't been able to wear yet, but I think the weather's like 50 degrees today, so I might bust that out later. They got new joggers. What I love about Cuts as a brand is they walk this very fine line between casual and professional. You see, they focus on minimal designs and can translate well from a social setting to where you look good at your dinner with friends, but you can also get away with wearing their products in more of a business setting. So I can go from this video to a business meeting to a family dinner tonight, and I I never have to change and I never feel like I'm dressed like a slob or I'm out of place because of the attention to detail Cuts puts into all their products. My favorite product they make is their elongated t-shirt. It's a staple of my wardrobe. I wear it at the gym. I wear it in these videos. I wear it out with friends. But now that they're adding all these new products, who knows? These new joggers might be a new staple of my wardrobe. They look fantastic. So Cuts is going to be a part of this channel going forward. They're just probably my favorite partnership I've ever had because 
I actually use them. They provide a ton of value to my life and I know they can provide a lot of value to y'all's. So if you're a man out there or you're watching this video and you have a man in your life and you're thinking, yo, this guy needs to step his swag up, use that link down below. You can get 15% off and take advantage of all the cool new things Cuts is doing. Thank you, Cuts, for sponsoring today's video and thank you to y'all for supporting the sponsors on this channel because it allows me to continue to make videos like this one. Now, the next thing I did is once I started building the social media art side of my photography and then the freelance side is I expanded into other avenues to get my name out there. And for me, I chose YouTube. YouTube made the most sense. Now, I didn't start a YouTube channel from the jump because it didn't make sense at the time. I didn't have the experience to really create a channel that I thought added value to people. It took me creating you know, a lot of the photography I was doing to understand that, okay, there's a story here that I can share with other people that gives a whole new side to my creativity. And I also felt like my skills at the time were finally good enough to where if I was to review a product or try to teach something, I had enough knowledge to pass it along to other people. Now, how this applies to anyone else out there watching this, it's not that I want you to go create a YouTube channel. You don't have to do that, but you can start thinking of ways to leverage your knowledge once you have it. So let's say you do your photography for a couple years and you start building a little business for yourself. Now you might find yourself in a position where you can do things like workshops or you can do something like sell presets. You can do gear reviews. You can make YouTube YouTube videos, whatever it is, you might now finally have a skill that you can pass along to other people and create another branch of your business. This is what I call the knowledge branch. So essentially now you have your business, normal freelance side, art side, and your knowledge side, which is another way to make money. And with YouTube, there are so many different things you can do, like affiliate programs. You can do things with you know, workshops like Skillshare. You can also get sponsorships and leverage the influence you get here. There's a lot of different ways to make money through that. But knowledge is always going to be something that people pay for. So as you start to acquire knowledge, it's a good idea to share it and put it out there with the world and continue to grow your business that way. And what's really cool is as more people find you for your knowledge, once again, it's going to snowball back to those other two branches of your business. They might be more interested in your art and maybe they'll buy a print, maybe they'll buy your book, or maybe they'll go book you for a shoot. Maybe they own an agency, have a friend who owns an agency, and they'll reach out to you for some work that way. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is commercial photography projects. Now, how I define a commercial photography project is pretty loose. Basically, this means that a company is buying out the rights to the photography that you are creating for them. Now, these jobs are not going to come early on in your career. They're going to come after you've built up a clientele, you've built up a name for yourself, a reputation for yourself, and you've continued to grow your business. This probably happens like five, six, seven years down the line. I don't know if I already mentioned it in this video, but this is definitely not a quick fix video. It's going to take you time to do this. And my experiences that I'm sharing with you happen over the course course of multiple years. So here's how I got into the commercial side of photography. When I was doing step two of this video, when I was building up my social media presence, even before I had this YouTube channel, I was working with brands who would want me to do advertising and sponsored posts on my page. You know, they'd send me a product, they'd say, make a cool photo of this, share it with hashtag ad. And in our contracts, there was always a licensing agreement about organic web reposts or organic web sharing. That was something I saw all the time. Basically, this meant that the client or the company company could reshare the photo on their social media outlets, but I maintained the rights to the image. I technically still owned it. So essentially, I was literally just advertising for them. But this got my foot in the door to one, understanding how licensing works, and also showing that I could create good internet lifestyle advertising for brands. So once again, snowball effect is happening here. So what happened is, as I did a couple of these and I continued to grow and grow the projects, I started getting approached by clients who said, hey, we want you to maybe do one of those on social media, but can you do 15 of them that we can just buy from you? Can we do that? And from there, I started finally getting approached by agencies who didn't even want me to post anything on their on my social media. They just wanted me to create content for them. But all this happened through word of mouth and through time and repetition of me continuing to create good work for brands over and over and essentially just building a name for myself and paying my dues. And that is what you can do as well. Now, I can't tell you exactly how to do this because 
it's a nuanced topic, but meeting people in person and networking that way, and then also obviously the social media side of things, is one of the best ways that you can get your foot in the door and get that first commercial project. And maybe it's a project that you take similar to mine, where it's just a web license and you're getting paid less money. You do a good job on that, snowball effect, you build some momentum, and then you can get another job off that, another job off that. Once again, this is something that takes place over the course of a couple years. You know, I think I got my first like commercial buyout like this, maybe four years ago or something like that, three years ago, but it was for so much less money than the ones that I'm doing now and the quotes I'm sending out currently. And it just takes a long time for you to show your value to people. But as you show that you can provide value to your potential customer through the photography that you're making and through the different ways they can use your photography, that is how your price is gonna continue to go up and you're gonna continue to make more money and be well on your way to that six-figure number. Now, I know there's a lot of information in today's video, but that is the exact roadmap that I used to get my business to where it was making six figures a year in revenue and onward to what it's been doing the last couple years. And it's gonna continue to grow into the future because like I said, I'm always building off of these bases that I started with, social media and person-to-person -person interactions. Those never go away. And then from there, you can branch out, like I said, get into knowledge, get into leveraging social media, web licensing, commercial projects, all that stuff, and really start making something for yourself. But at the end of the day, the most important important thing to remember is that you as a photographer are providing value to clients. So the more value you can provide to a client, the more money you can charge and the quicker you can get to those money goals. Thank you guys for watching today. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are not yet. I will see y'all next time.